Okay, in this lecture, in this lecture, we're going to, okay, with Sarah and company, we're going to be making the CO2, um, and Devin, sorry, sometimes known as uh, other, other names. Um, any case, we're going to be making the uh, CO2 illustration from the Lewis dot diagram. So let's start with the Lewis dot diagram, and I'm going to start with uh, carbon in the middle, and how about a different ink? So I got my carbon has four valence electrons, and we should be no sweat unless it's hot. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Okay, so not really sure why I'm drawing X's and dots, uh, but here we go. This oxygen has six as well. All right, in fact, I'm gonna change this because I can. Let's make the oxygen red. Okay, red dots for the oxygen. Yeah, nice red dots. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is because see these um, these electrons for the oxygen in the illustration. Okay, so now I'm ready. All right, so this is my drawing, which I should have drew in the middle, but here we go. Now we're gonna have our carbon, which is or make black, and it's in the middle. Now what we should see first is that there are two regions of space on either side of the carbon. Even though there seems to be something going on here with the second bond, it doesn't add to the shape. There's only This is definitely linear, as we've already learned, which means it must be sp hybridized. However, okay, the second bond comes into play here a little bit. There's something going on right here. Okay, and we're going to say that the shape okay, is dependent upon the region. This second bond, which we're going to learn, is about pi bonding. And the second bond or the third bond is always going to be that pi bond. Where does it happen? Well, we have to illustrate it. So let's start with the carbon. It's sp hybridized. That means an s, which is spherical, and one p came together, all right, <laughs> and made an sp orbital, made two sp orbitals. So two orbitals go in, two orbitals come out. All right, let's draw them if I best I, best I can do here. So I have one s orbital. And I have another s orbital. In fact, I'm not liking that. Too small. Let's supersize it. Okay, so here's one s orbital. I should say sp orbital. Here's another. Not bad for me. Okay, so here's an sp, and I'm drawing two. And again, you should know that because two orbitals mix together to make two more orbitals that are exactly the same energy level. And if you remember the balloons, they're going to repel themselves. The second bond here, above and below, is not affecting the shape. We're going to see that. Okay. At the end, we have the oxygens, and we've talked about this already. At the end, on the oxygens, we know that it's terminal. It's only bonding in one direction, so I don't need hybridization. As we've already talked about, we can't bond 180 degrees in an uh, unhybridized P, because if you fill one end of a P with two electrons, this end is filled since it's the same orbital. So let's go to the uh, oxygen now, let's draw it. It's going to be unhybridized. So here I go. That will be my PX. Oh, yeah, PX we'll call it. This is the same PX. Then we're going to have one that goes all the way up. And this is my PY. And then we have one that comes out of the screen, it goes behind you, that's PZ. All right, that's the one I'm calling it, some people call it differently. So we have these. Now I'm gonna put in the valence electrons, which are gonna be red, okay, and the, oh, I forgot something, the S orbital. I'm drawing the S orbital because it's not hybridized. The S and P did not mix the end. So here comes my electrons. I have, I'm drawing S here. There's one electron, here's another electron, there's the third electron, here comes the fourth, fifth, and I'll put the sixth up here. So I put six electrons, totally unhybridized, I don't need it to explain it because I'm bonding only on one side. If you look at the configuration of oxygen, 1s2, I don't care about that's filled, 2s2, 2p4, if you look at the boxes, that orbital notation, the s is filled. I showed two dots there. And then we have three p's. Each of those dumbbell shapes has a box when we use orbital notation. And 2p4 means we have two, count them, two unfilled orbitals right there. 
and I'm showing them, and I'm going to color code this a little bit, I'm going to show them right here. So this P, oh, undo here. Um, this P, Y, has one of them right there. And this one only had one. So that's where these came from. Okay, so there's two P orbitals with one apiece, and then we have an orbital, if you notice right here, that's completely filled. That's this orbital, PZ. Of course, the S is filled as well. Okay, that's one side completed. Let's go to the other side. Same idea. Okay, if I could click and, and copy that, I will, but it's a carbon copy. Here comes my P X. Here comes my P Y. That one's much better. Here comes my PZ. Okay, and of course I have my S because it's unhybridized. Now the S, just like over here, there's two electrons. So I'm just put them right here, it doesn't matter. Okay, then this has one, two, three, okay, um, four, five, six. Those are my valence electrons. Let's go back to the carbon. Okay. Carbon has also four electrons. Here comes one and two, and guess what? There's three and four, and where do they go? Well, let's go back to the hybridization. If, if uh, CO2 is sp hybridized, s and p came together to make two sp orbitals, well, you should understand there are two p's that were not hybridized. So there are two count them, two unhybridized P's that are part of this structure. So let's draw them. Since the S and P is taking up the PX plane, let's draw an unhybridized PY, which we notice is in the same plane of the POI of the oxygens, and let's draw a PZ going in and out, if you can think with me. So this is my PY same PY down here, and PZ, PZ. Okay, so carbon has one, two, let's put them in there, uh, three, okay, and now four, and those are all my valence electrons. Now, it's clear to me that the sigma bond, okay, is right here direct overlapping. There's my sigma bond. And the first bond in my diagrams are always going to be my sigma bond. It's the second bond party, people, that troubles all of us. Where does this second bond come from? Well, right here. Look carefully. This p orbital right here has one electron, this py. This py from the hybridized carbon that left out two of them because it was sp has one. Well, two orbitals kind of perpendicularly overlap. And this represents one pi bond. This electron can jump to this one, this one can jump back and forth, and these two orbitals by sharing feel like they have two. And that's a pi bond. Don't get confused, it's one bond. These are one orbitals. Even though they're above and below, it's still one bond. It's a little weaker than a sigma because it's above the plane of where the nucleus is. Now, that's one bond right there. How do we explain the second bond on the other side? Because all intents and purposes, these orbitals are now filled. So I'm going to throw dashes in to show that these are locked up. Just like PX is locked up because you have two on this side. So this P is locked up. So where does the other one go? Right here. Front and back. These guys are now sharing two. The PZ with one and the PZ with one and the carbon is sharing one. And that's our pi bond. So we have top and bottom, front and back. Okay, pi bonding. It's kind of like a chain link fence where you have a hook going this way and a hook going up. And that shows the illustration and understands that the second bond is coming from. The reason why carbon can bond 
in another direction, it has another unhybridized P to allow that pi bonding. Pi bonding comes exclusively from unhybridized P's. Okay? And anytime you see something with a double or a triple bond, the second or third bond is the pi. The first bond is always the sigma. Hope you enjoyed.